Welcome to Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling, the ESPN for all things comedy, with your hosts, Mark Riccadonna and Richie Byrne. And now, grab a drink and welcome Mark Riccadonna and Richie Byrne. Hey, hey, welcome to Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. I'm your host, Mark Rigadana. With me as always, Richie Burn. <laughs> With a mouthful of food right on time, I'm like a waiter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we have our uh, producer hanging with us, Tom Bannis. Well, Tommy, we were going to bring you in, but you decided to be on. Ah, a- we didn't make it clear, though. I yeah. believe that wasn't clear. I believe he said, we're going to have you on in the beginning. And I said, okay. I was following orders like a good soldier. I don't care. In, <laughs> in Tom's defense, I um, well, how are you guys doing? We, we've been a little like on and off, and then we had a very on. Mm-hmm. Um we want to thank anybody who's watching now for uh, coming in with the. Uh, we had a twenty-four hour uh, comedy podathon. Podathon, uh, raising money for Bob Nelson, which yes. was, uh, which was a, uh, it was, uh, it was a bittersweet thing because it was so awesome being with everybody, but it was, you know, and it's for a good cause, but I wish it was for a happy cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was. Uh, that it's funny because when we did the when we did the pot on it in January, then we did the 84 hours, and at the end it was like everybody who'd been such an influence came on, and the the British guys and 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 every and uh and and uh, uh Voss and, and 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 everybody and we had a lot of fun, you know, and I thought. We need to end that way again. And then Bob came on. And and Rob Bartlett, who's just a god, by the way. Yeah. Say that. He's just a god. We just love him so much. And and he treats us like shit, but we love him anyway. <laughs> but, um, uh, Rob had written me. He goes, listen, I Bob's really uptight about this. I really don't. We need to have people on who... He's comfortable he knows or whatever. And it turned out to be us and Frank Bignola and Christy Miller and uh um Adam Ferrara. Adam Ferrara, who who God bless Adam Ferrara, man. Seriously, I don't know him that well, Mark. Do you? Um I I, I kind of did, and then he blew up and like, I don't know I, I don't know him well, but but we, I don't, but anything we call him to do. He's, he's in, there. and he's not only there; he's fucking there, like, bam, man, and and he has the guy's got a real rep. The guy has no reason to do. He that. has an actual career. He doesn't need to yeah. slum it with us. Yeah, <laughs> and he does that for us. And now, granted, this time it was Bob Nelson who was an influence and a friend from yeah. and, and and everything. And I get it, but he, I don't want to limit that because. Let's face it, man. The guy's been there for us, and he doesn't have to be. He's not our best friend. He's not. But yeah, <laughs> he was the first person to reply. I literally sent the email yeah. out to like over two hundred comedians, <laughs> and it was yeah. like within five seconds. It goes, "What time do you need me, buddy?" Yeah. I was You're like, well. and and he um, <laughs> so he was on. You were on. Tom was on. Vicky Plummer, Frank Mignola, Christy Miller. And Rob was actually writing me saying, "Don't lose Vicky. Uh, uh, don't lose Christy. Don't lose Frank. Like he, because those people devoted so much of that twenty-four hours, and they've yeah. been great friends to us in so many ways. But that twenty-four hours, Frank Vignola, if, if Frank, we need you right now. I'm on two thirty. He would pop on anytime. anytime. Whatever it was, and he was right there. And he was. And the funny thing is that last hour." Before, well, a little bit before the hour, when uh, before Bob came out, um, uh, Adam realized that Rob and I were shot. We were shot, 
And you could see Adam just, he just took that ball and ran with it, man. He was so funny. He reminded me of Gas back in the uh, in January. In the long one, yeah. And we really needed someone to just step up and go. Gas was there. That's what Adam did. When, I mean, it was just, he was so tremendous. The story about Joey Cola just giving him up when he when he got arrested. <laughs> he got arrested. So funny, it, was man. it was such a great story. <laughs> so <laughs> and then and then and then I'm I don't mean to like take over, but when Bob Nelson it's, came, it's Bob, your show too, man. <laughs> Bob, Bob was so poignant and so I mean when he kept saying, Why is why are people doing this for me? You know, it's like, dude, you've yeah. given so much to so many, man. You know, Indeed. and it was just a wonderful thing. And with the, as far as I know, you could still go to the GoFundMe, right, Tom? Yeah, you can still go to the GoFundMe. Where it's getting closer and closer because it's still we have had more donations come in post. I what number Frank are we at? It. I, I think we're at sixty-three thousand. I, we were approaching 64. We were like right there, I think. Oh, well, it was, uh, you know, you might be right. I mean, Vignola wrote me and said we were at, or us, it said, because Vignola, we're trying to get the 65,000, but I don't understand that number. I'm sorry, we're at 62,996. That's where it's at right now. So we're pretty much at 63,000. Yeah. We want to get to 65,000. And and whoever's watching, what's the what's the can you put it up, Tom? The GoFundMe. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to put it into all of the comments. So anybody that wants to do put that, it up, Tom, I can put it up, but it'll could. take 20 minutes. <laughs> no, I got it. It's already up now. There you go, guys. You just want to click in the, in the comments. That's the GoFundMe. We only need, we're only two thousand away from the mark. We will be where they set it for. Yeah, let's get this, guys. Let's get this. Let's this nail it. I don't feel really good. Whoever is the person who puts them over the top, it's going to feel really good. Yeah. Just an important influence for comedy in so many well, ways. And, and Rob so, delivered that speech that was so heartfelt, and yeah, I was and waiting I, for I, him I to, to... I had to go pee, and I, I came back, and I hear Rob crying, and I'm like, oh, I just missed a big, important moment here. Big but, moment. <laughs> I was waiting for the punchline. I was waiting for him to, you know, because he me got us before too. on that. And uh, it was so heartfelt. And then, and, and then I saw Adam was crying. Frank was crying. Christy was crying. The I didn't cry because I'm a man. Bob Nelson couldn't get on the feet. All you saw was a blanket. That was really funny. Rob gave a heartfelt introduction. And then it was just a black screen of Bob Nelson going, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do. It was so funny. It was so funny. Oh, well, so I mentioned this story at the uh, the pilot taping, and I was sitting in uh, makeup with Dan Loria, and he goes, you're friends with Rob Bartlett? I go, yeah. He goes, oh, we got to send him a picture. Let's send him a picture. Oh, wow. He, he was getting hair, fake hair put on because he was doing a scene where he's shaving. Okay. And so he has hair like right here, like this, and no chin. And so we take the picture. I send it to Bartlett. He goes, "What's he playing? An Orthodox Jew?" <laughs> 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 and uh, he he was talking about um, his, his, one of his closest friends, uh, Dan. Apparently, and uh, he does a lot of celebrity things. And um, he does these like celebrity poker games and they raise money for stuff. And um, he has a great story. He said he'll come on the podcast and tell it about hanging with Sid Caesar. Oh my and, God. Um, really? Yeah. And the writers told me that story. So through room for the Sid Caesar show. And yeah. And so he, um, he's going to come on the show. And then he started telling us that one of his closest friends is Lewis Black. So oh, really? I was like, holy shit, Lewis Black's going to be on the Who show. Who just did, yeah, Pavaromo. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. That's such a small world. Well, <laughs> yeah, this business is a small business. Everything, it it just shows you. It's Yeah, it's all circular. I mean, I, I mean, it all comes back. Um, um, and then we'll get, I know we got to get Derek out, but um, last night, I know this guy, uh, he comes into a bar I hang out in. I don't know his real name. His nickname is Sleepy because he falls asleep at the bar all the time. So <laughs> that's yeah. great, by the way. So he told me he goes, uh, 
you're a comedian? I go, yeah. He goes, uh, I know a comedian. He goes, I go, really? He goes, yeah. Uh, he goes, I don't know. He claims he's big. He's big, but I don't know. And I go, he, he said he ho- he's the he does something for one of the TV shows. And I go, which show? And he goes, uh, Rachel Ray. And I go, Joey Cola. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you know him? You know him? And I'm like laughing. Wow. It turns out he used to cut Joey Cola's hair. How funny is that? Like, I've known this guy for like a year now. And <laughs> I didn't even know he cut hair. <laughs> That's how small this And I go, Joey Cola is one of my best friends. He got me the job at Dr. Oz. He's like, Oh, it's so weird. I go, yeah, it's really weird. But that's, you know what I mean? That's the funny thing about this business, you know? Yeah. It seems so huge, but yet there's always a connection. Six degrees of seven uh, of Kevin Bacon. You know what I mean? <laughs> Indeed. So the, um, <clears throat> so he started telling us uh, some Lewis Black stories. He was telling us some old showbiz stories. So we're going to bring him on. But let's bring on our guest. Yes. Um, we'll bring yeah. on our guest and we'll get to the drink and the joke. Um, should we, uh, before we bring him out, do you want to play the Bob Nelson video or should we just bring Derek straight out? Um, let's play the video real quick. And, and when we return from the video, he will be on here with us. 100%. With Derek A. Honan, baby. Hang on, Derek. Indeed. We'll see you guys in just a moment. And remember, link is in the, is in the comments. Feel free to go over and make a donation. Oh, uh, am I on? Am I on camera? Uh, I need that toilet paper! Billy Bob Rubeck, University of Texas, right guard. The picture sucks. If you knew anything about baseball, you'd realize that. Tom. And I'll tell you, no radiation leakage. <laughs> what? Do I? <laughs> Love Bob. <laughs> I wanted to play that because I wanted to fix my connection. It kept freezing up on you. Um, so, folks, Derek Ahonen's joining us. How you doing, Derek? Rick. Hey. Doing where great, you, Mark. Where are you? Uh, I didn't even ask. Are you in L.A. or Chicago? L.A. All right. All right. I, um, so the way we start every show is we have a drink and we also uh, we, we share a joke. So um, let's start with our guest, Derek. What are you drinking? Uh, coffee. Uh, you- Colombian coffee that my mother was so kind to DoorDash to me uh, because oh. I, I didn't want to walk. I don't drive, so I didn't want to walk a mile to the coffee store. So she... Delivered me some nice Colombian coffee. <laughs> Colombian coffee. That means there's a special ingredient. <laughs> that special ingredient uh, in other forms caused me much brain damage in my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, what are you drinking, buddy? Well, before uh, Derek, how long has your mother been driving for DoorDash? <laughs> 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 you know, my mom is so nice that she would actually drive from Chicago to LA to bring me coffee. She would. I swear, Anna. Mark, you like, know Anna, yeah. She's the best. Oh, and, and Pop. Oh, the, one of the greatest artists, man. I would. I got. We should pull do up some. Chuck, do you own a Chuck A. Honan painting? I do not. Fraley does. There's certain people scattered around the world because he won't sell them. He just gives them away. <laughs> <laughs> I've sat with your pop and had many, uh, many a cold ones and laughed our asses off. I absolutely <laughs> adore him. Uh, <laughs> he's, got the, uh, he's, he's sick, you know, so he can't drink anymore. No, yeah. No, let's continue on. Yeah, <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah, we'll keep it light and fun. Yeah. Richie, what are you drinking? Um, uh, Derek's mom door dashed me Johnny Walker Black. <laughs> <laughs> She's a really great lady. Love her. <laughs> I um I'm dr- uh, let's Tom. What do you got? 
I am drinking a high noon. It's a vodka and soda. Where Ooh. it is. Yeah, it's in the can made for you already. I'm nice. Going, right? High noon. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Tom, Tom, Tom. What is yes. that? It's called a high noon. So it's a vodka and soda pre-mixed in the can. Is that the stuff I see like in between the sports games? Sometimes. Like, that, that, like seltzer. Yeah, exactly. It's like the seltzer and vodka. He's getting white girl drunk. I am getting white girl weight. It's, it's a step up from a white claw. <laughs> <laughs> it's a step up from white claw. <laughs> I, my neighbor brought these over the other day. They're Lime City Lager Beer uh, from Love City Brewery in uh, Philadelphia. And I drank about uh, nine or ten of these because I was doing yard work when it was like 100 degrees out. And I was so hungover. Really? So hung over the next really? day. It was awful. But it's Mark, do you do yard work? I do. Do you enjoy yeah. it? Uh is it like there? So here's the thing. I don't at all while I'm doing it, but I really do love it's the same way with like grilling and smoking meats and stuff. I really kind of like have a moment of being like, Yeah, I'm a suburban dad, right? <laughs> It takes you back to like the eighties and nineties. Yeah, I feel like like oh, this is what guys yeah. do. <laughs> Derek, Derek, I do yard work, and it's really fulfilling when I hang up the phone with my landscaper and tell him to get here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I might have to. Uh, my front lighting is a little weird, so I'm going to turn on the TV. But I don't know what's about works. to emerge from it. So there that's might his be way of saying there might be a lot of fl flashes and stuff. I know, but you did get lighter. I, I did not think that would work at all, but it worked a little. Well, it worked for Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, let's go into the joke. Derek, do you have a joke you'd like to share with us? All right, you wanted a joke. I wanted a joke, man. I searched through all my material, and it was always these long-winded jokes. And I found one that you were a part of, Mark, in a play called Happy in the Poor House. Uh, uh, I think we got photos of that. Oh, great. <laughs> I'd love to see them. <laughs> and, you know, I've, my brain damage is... You, know, you, you live up... When you spend... 10 years living up five flights of stairs, you take a lot of falls and you, <laughs> you, you, you forget things. Oh, I'm with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you know that beach in Virginia? What's it called? Virginia Beach? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. We did not prepare that. <laughs> But Mark, but Mark knew the line because he was in the play. He knew the line. <laughs> you know, that beach I think that's the only one-liner ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, uh, I, I asked Richie. I special requested him to tell this joke because uh, Derek is uh, – anybody who's watching, uh, Derek's in – I met him – through uh through acting but he's an amazing playwright um he's a, a great director uh the guy does it all if it involves art he's part of it and uh that's why i really love him i'll tell the story of how we met later but um i asked richie to tell this one for us <laughs> a producer and a director are having lunch and the producer says to the director hey uh what do you think of that actress i sent in uh, yesterday for that audition and, and the, the director goes, oh my God, I don't know where you found her, but she's awful. I mean, she's fat. She's ugly. she got the worst personality. She can't act. She's disgusting to be around. I don't understand. And, and the producer goes, hey, whoa, 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 that's my daughter. And the director goes, let me finish. <laughs> 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 it so explains this business <laughs> so richie i uh have you ever has somebody ever been brought up to you a bunch of times before you met them 
and like the oh you guys would get along oh you love this guy yeah. you love this guy yeah. and, and what's your reaction to that I, it depends on the person who's telling me it I think if, if it's somebody like like if you said oh dude you would love this guy I would be like I'm gonna love this guy you know yeah. what I mean yeah. but there are other people like especially in comedy <laughs> where you go I don't even like you. <laughs> like, like if Tom Bannis said, "Dude, you got to meet this guy," I'd be like hesitant. <laughs> I was an insecure seventeen-year-old, and everybody was coming over to me, going, "Oh my god, you love this guy, Derek. Derek's like the coolest guy. He's so funny. You two would be so funny together." Wait till you meet Derek. Wait till you meet Derek. I'm sitting there thinking, "Fuck Derek. I don't know who this guy is." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who this guy is or who he thinks he is, but he is not me. Like, how dare these people say this? And then one day we we're in the library and, and we met. You remember? <laughs> is this the Mick Jagger story? Yeah. I turn, I go, I hear you do a mean Mick Jagger. <laughs> really? He starts going around the library doing the. I'm howling, laughing. I'm like, oh, I don't God, like this. Twenty guy. years ago, brother. <laughs> Twenty years. You were doing the fucking Mick Jagger all through the library. I'm like, oh, I love this dude. <laughs> and then well, we got, in, then we got in a lot of trouble. I remember, you know what I remember? I remember you were, uh, I, you, you were giving me those eyes because we were both like 20 years old. We're both like 40 now. Uh, I don't know. Don't uh, give it away, Derek. <laughs> yeah, does age play uh, a thing in comedy? No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Um, <laughs> we were like 20 years old. And I remember I remember you giving me those eyes like, I can't stand this son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and when you said, I hear you do a mean Mick that Jagger, it wasn't like, Hey, I hear you do a mean Jagger. It was just was, I hear you do a mean Mick yeah. Jagger. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I think I <laughs> You had me rolling so hard. But Derek hung with all the cool kids. Like he hung with all the cool guys. And I, I hung was at... the cool kid. They yeah. hung with me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I was so far behind everybody because I was a fucking idiot jock from Ohio who never read a book cover to cover that I was so insecure. After school, I never hung out because I was too busy trying to catch up and figure out what the hell I was doing there. Well, do you still do the audio books when you're on the road? Yep. Oh, yeah. In fact, I got, uh, what's his name, Robert Sedgwick's new book. About growing up white privilege. You do you know that he's a friend of mine? No shit. Do you know I'm... that I do you know that I was hanging out with him at that time and didn't know anything about his arrest? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I wonder if I could get Robbie. I he he just that. did Judy Gold's uh, podcast, and I was like, I'm. I just bought his book. Literally, I was like bartender at that time, bro. Wow. <laughs> I, I used to hang out with Robbie every night, and, and, and <laughs> like. He, and now I'm like, Robbie Sedgwick has a book, like, like, and and it's like I, at that time, oh, I got arrested. I'm like, Robbie Sedgwick got arrested. Like he he never told me any of this shit, dude. I didn't <laughs> Why would he? Why would he? Yeah, like, I, I, it, it was right at that time. I was his bartender on the Upper West Side, <laughs> and, and I remember he was living in his grandparent because you know he comes from wealth. His yeah. Parents, prestigious and uh that I, i'm dying to read the book i can't i can't believe you just said that that's funny <laughs> well what i do is i get two books i always buy two books at the same time well usually it's three books because i get you one them that at I... the cracker barrel you rent them mark you told me one time you rent them at one cracker barrel and then when you go on tour you return it to another cracker barrel hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> am i crazy or am no I right? no that's 100 right, right, i don't do right, that right. anymore because now no cars have cd players anymore so you, uh, you have to download them which now, when now cds went out of now you just go to crack a barrel to eat 
No, this is a well-known road comic story, Richie. Souvenirs, I, don't, I can't believe you don't know this. Don't know. Cracker Barrel is where you take your dumps. Because when you oh, go in, the people in the restaurant think you're there for the store. The people in the store think you're there for the restaurant. Nobody asks questions. You go in, <laughs> clean bathroom. You go out. Nobody asks questions. Oh, why don't I know that? That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know, Mark, you're a genius. And Not comes- just funny, a wealth of information he is. <laughs> I'm a dirt. <laughs> if it if it's something that doesn't matter in real life, yeah, I probably know about it. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I do. That's actually the, the, the renting information on the Cracker Barrel does mean something in real life. That's true. I guess everybody should know that information because I always tell every road comic I know, if you do over 500 miles a week driving, you got to know this. I didn't know it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but that's because you had a cushy warm-up job. (laughs) You haven't been on the road like an idiot. If I just needed to go to the bathroom, I called Dr. Oz. He took care of (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Doc. Somebody so, told me recently, and I won't say who it was, warmed up Dr. Oz. And I can't believe that somebody actually had to warm up Dr. Oz. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, let's clap it up because we're about to talk about syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story on season one. We did a, sh- a segment on people who were impaled, like, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we had people coming out who, and this one woman. Did they have, like, bars stuck in them? Yeah. Well, they had, like, like, ba- like De Niro and Backdraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had a one woman on the show. She had fallen downstairs and landed on a mic stand. And the mic stand went through her chest and just missed her heart. It like was a quarter of an inch away from killing her. Oh my God. And they had a, you know, they had an x-ray of it and she's on the set. She's sitting there. So we go to commercial. And I remember turning to one of the, one of the cameramen and going, this is probably going to get me fired, but I can't not do this joke. <laughs> and we go to commercial and, and she's sitting there. And I go, how about a hand from Maria? What a horrible ordeal. I said, I can relate to what she went through. I spent most of my childhood with my father's foot up my ass. (laughs) (laughs) And the only thing that got me through was she thought it was the funniest thing. She thought that was was like, that was so funny when he said his father's foot was. (laughs) (laughs) Richie, though, you, I mean, your Rich Ramirez story. (laughs) Richard Ramirez, like, Richard Ramirez, L.A.? No, no not the murder. No, no. Not the murder. <laughs> no I'm, like putting, I'm like pointing to the map in L.A. No, Richard Ramirez. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Let me turn it around on my map with yarn on it and pictures of people. <laughs> <laughs> this poor guy's suffering one of the worst ways to die. Oh, He's- the, the paper cuts? <laughs> yeah. Richie Ramirez was a great... The only thing he was greater at as a comic than a comic was a person. He was one of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. He was such a nice guy, and he had a pro- he had a liver problem. He almost died. He had to get a liver transplant. He was like two days away from dying when they found a liver for him. And then years later, he ended up with cancer on the liver. It was a whole fucking thing. So he had a gig in Brooklyn in the Bronx, and I'm on. The, I'm going to be on the gig. And I had done Oz all day. I was really tired. I, I go to the Bronx, and Richie's sitting there, and he's beat up. I mean, he's near death. He's beat up. And God God bless him. He just kept getting on stage, and he was amazing at that time. So we're sitting across from each other, and I had gotten a paper cut from the uh, director's paperwork, where you re- and I cut my finger. And you know how the, they can hurt? The paper cuts can hurt. So I'm sitting yeah, getting the crevice. The- yeah, and Richie yeah. had fallen off the stage recently and broke a rib. So he had the guy was just he was in just such bad shape. And I'm sitting across from him going, ow, ah, fuck. 
And he goes, what's the matter, bro? And I go, I got this paper cut. It's killing me. And I look up and this guy is gray. He's hunched over. He's got, he's like that. And I, I just start laughing. I just start laughing at it. Like, cause who am I to go? And he goes, Oh no, man, I understand. That's terrible. You got a little paper cut. He goes, my ribs are broken. My liver's gone. I got cancer throughout my body, but I'm really worried about my <laughs> paper cut. And we start laughing. Yeah. Mark, we had, I, I'm not going to use any names, but we had a friend, have a friend whose husband used to run a comedy club and uh, he he died of leprosy. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, watching her go through, like, her husband dying of leprosy was an insane asylum. Wow. wow. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It was just like, <laughs> yeah. It was just like his hands were falling off. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, why do we get why do we get into the death game? <laughs> Wait a minute. Let, you let me finish. The <laughs> sorry, sorry, Richie. Sorry, wow, Richie. You destroyed this one, Derek. But anyway. <laughs> and I know who you're talking about, and it wasn't leprosy. <laughs> what was it? Uh it was the thing where your your organs and stuff and your bones turned to Right, Mark? Are we talking about the yeah. same? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, well, that, like, yeah, yeah. It's a brittle. It just gets brittle. Rheumatoid arthritis? Is it, is uh, it, it's it's worse than arthritis it, there, Ben. It's it? not leprosy. <laughs> lupus. Lupus. No. Oh, it, no. It was some super rare thing where... Yeah. The, it might have been, yeah. been lupus. Yeah. Been he was losing appendages. Yeah. yeah. It, it, but anyway, but, but we digress. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Richie's like, I got my, my ribs broken. I got cancer throughout my body. My liver's going, but I'm really worried about your, your paper cut. And we laugh. And he's going, I can't laugh because my ribs don't let, don't make me laugh. So the, we get that quiet moment after you stop talking for a minute. And I just go, you know, man, it really hurts. And he <laughs> fucking started, and he's going, ah, oh, don't make it. <laughs> but yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. And, yeah. Uh, it wasn't leprosy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was, but it started with an L. Okay. It's, it's probably lupus, but leprosy is very biblical. It made it a much more interesting story. I, like, I logged in. I'm like, leprosy? I don't think that's been around. Yeah, wait, I didn't know anyone in the United States. That <laughs> no, they're still lepers. They're still lepers. Are it's, there? His name began with an L, too. So that's the funny part. <laughs> Everything comes in threes. Lucian the leper. <laughs> <laughs> I only met him one time. He was very nice to me. So, well, he's good for you. Yeah, he's very nice. You have to fist bump with him. Very nice to me, but I like his his ex wife a lot. She's a great girl. Yeah, she's yeah, she's team. she's really cool. She's been really supportive of my career. As really, a, as a playwright, yeah. she's a wonderful person. She really, yeah, is. yeah she's very nice. What and, and Derek uh, also was a comedian. Did comedy? No, I was never a comedian. I tried it. Okay, well, first off, Thank we, you, we um, first of all, you know how many people I've heard who tried it and went, Yeah, no, I did comedy, so God bless you, man, for knowing what you did. All right, I but, tried oh, it three times. Rick Adana's got all three videos of it. <laughs> <laughs> we started on the same day, we did it, and we did all three shows together, Except and now you we're good at it, and I was not. Well, <laughs> no, I continued to do it. Because here's the story. The first time we went up, Derek went on stage, did his thing, and came off stage. And the owner sent someone up to get him, to bring him down to his office. So Carrie Hoffman brings him down to his office. Suzanne and Carrie want to represent him off of his first time doing stand-up comedy. Kidding? Wow. No. And then Derek says to them. No, that happened, but I can't believe you're using his actual name. Bleep it out when uh, you put Why? it in you. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about it? I'm <laughs> still yeah. friendly with Carrie. He managed me later in life. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. Cool. 
But they brought him down and they said, you know, we're thinking of, do you have representation, all this stuff? And Tarek's like, why are you fucking with me? Wasn't it bad enough that I went up and bombed and now you guys are fucking with me? And they're like, no, seriously, we want to manage you. <laughs> really? Yeah. Derek yeah, was really good. Story. No, it's a true story. I can't believe you remember that. Of course I remember it, man. That was like such an awesome moment. Like we <laughs> That's interesting because I, I won a contest at the, at Stand Up New York, and one of the prizes was that you got to perform at Stand Up New York. And Carrie Hoffman said, Yeah, you're not getting up. What <laughs> <laughs> like, a part of the prize. He goes, Yeah, it's not happening. What? Car Carrie told me once I wasn't funny enough to answer the phones there. <laughs> Speaking of which, Mark, you know what creeps me what, what which creeped me out? Listen, I haven't spoken to Carrie in over a decade. Uh but he was always just in that fucking room downstairs, yeah, watching everything. Like like uh, like big brother. Uh, like it ever freaked like, me out about Roosh. Like the bald the second Baldwin brother and Sliver. He's just <laughs> watching <laughs> he's just watching the entire hotel room. <laughs> I was just I was creeped out. And he's like somebody said, like, come downstairs. And I was just like why weren't you in the house? <laughs> yeah. I hated that they did that. I'll be right back, guys. Sorry, I'll be right back. Nick DiPaolo yeah. used to go on stage and just yell into the camera up in the corner <laughs> and just yell at Carrie into the camera, not even care the audience was watching. He would just roast them through the camera. It was great. <laughs> so, uh, so I guess, um, so you did stand up, and wh what made you not want to continue? Me or Tom? You. No, you. Me? Uh, I didn't think um, I was good. No, you didn't. What was it about it? Because Well, it okay, so let me put it this way. So I love basketball. I played basketball my entire childhood. I could never go left. If you can't go left, you can't play the game. Okay, so I never – this thing is useless except for cupping an ass. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll leave it alone. Uh, but I could never go left. If you can't go left, you can't play basketball. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing that I wanted to do was uh, be a baseball pitcher. I played little league all the way through pony. I could not throw a curve to save my life. I could throw. I could throw a fastball. Never throw a curve. And I was just mm -hmm. like, all right, this thing's over. Okay. Cut to 20 years later, stand up. It just didn't feel, I don't know the exact reasons, but I felt like if I was to exert my humor upon something, it would probably be uh, theater or film or something like that, uh, as opposed yeah. to a 15 minute set. Now, since I don't give a shit about living anymore, uh, <laughs> I might try and write a 15 minute set for myself. <laughs> <laughs> or five, no, I'd have to do a five minute set and pay five dollars at 5 p.m. You know, for you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> five dollars for five minutes at 5 p.m. on a Monday afternoon. Uh, <laughs> and you just practice in front of other comics. <laughs> Gary I'm Allen just posted, how the hell are you with women? <laughs> Derek does really well. He does very oh, well thanks, for Thanks, well. Mark. Thanks. Yeah. I do. I do. <laughs> well, no, I did. I did. See, that's the thing about Rona. Is that, like, I'm like, I did damn good for uh, 20 years. And then all of a sudden, Rona happens. My dad gets sick. It, you know, a bunch of things. And next thing I know, a girl threatened to kill me. Uh, no shit. What? Yeah, I love her. I love her. 
Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like one of those guys that like uh, when I'm like Tina Turner, you know, like when Ike says, I'll kill you, bitch. I'm like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like some trailer park shit. <laughs> Trailer park shit. Call it what you will. <laughs> <laughs> so you but, got those, uh, but when, when you, I, every time a woman's ever punched me, I the, my first instinct is to kiss her. <laughs> I kind of understand it. It's because they're so passionate. They're like, yeah, oh, you have this they, much they, passion they, for they me. They like me. <laughs> I think you know. Part of me thinks I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> Although I'm not, I'm Scandinavian Dago. <laughs> damn it, Mark! I can't, be- Mark! I cannot believe that you, as crazy as you were, got the w- a beautiful. Wife. I really, uh, think it's terrific, uh, and uh, two, two, two boys. And you're daddying it up, and you're still on the road working as a comic. I have no idea how you're doing that uh, because I can't uh, somehow compartmentalize uh, any type of normal life with um, the creative life. It's 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 brutal and uh, and a lot of things suffer because of it i really think i could get a lot more done but i also when i didn't have to do it all i was lazy you know it just naturally i was lazy where it was like you know sleep till noon and i would do whatever i wanted and i would never get but now it's like fuck i got to get my writing done so as soon as the kids go to bed i got to go sit down and finish the writing you know, or as soon as uh, I get home from the road, I have to be a dad and spend time with the kids. It's it's um, it's actually putting a, a jolt of need in of like, OK, I need to do this. I need to do that. And I need to get things done where before it was always like, I'll get to it. You know, so well, it was that, always that's always the, the see, 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 that's the weird thing about not having kids at 40 uh, is that you really have no obligations. You know, like, you have no, like, I mean, you have obligations for work or whatever the hell you need to do for the day. But you don't have, you could fail at it, right? You could fail at it. You could lose yeah. it. Who gives a shit? You know, like <laughs> I don't. Wanna, but if you have kids, you know, it's just like there's these things I gotta do. I gotta go watch the little league game. I gotta go provide. I gotta go do this. Yeah. And when you don't have that, and a certain friend, a certain Dago, because I'm Dago, I can say <laughs> Dago, and you're Dago too. All right. Uh, a certain day golf friend of ours living in Florida right now. <laughs> Africa map. Wait, uh, <laughs> put it out. Thank you. He's <laughs> losing his mind. He was, he was always destined to have a family by the age he was 24. But he keeps, he can't keep his Wiener Schnitzel in his. Uh, <laughs> Calvin Klein's, <laughs> but that's I mean, so that's like a, a it's a it's a it's a really hard balance, and it's you know sometimes sometimes I miss out on stuff that I really want to do, and sometimes you know like this pilot came along. I was on a work vacation where I was in tour of New England. And I'm with the wife, the kids, we're doing the beaches, we're going on, and it was like the first time in a really long time that it was like at night, I would go, okay, you know, I had fun with you guys all day at six o'clock, daddy's got to go to work, I'll see you guys tonight when I get back to the hotel. They would continue doing their thing, 
I'd come back and I was happy. I was very happy. And then out of nowhere, I get a phone call to audition for this pilot. And I do it thinking, you know, who cares? It's not going to happen. I'm not going to get it. I never get anything. I haven't acted in so long. And then when the, they said, all right, you need to be here Saturday, I was more upset about losing the vacation time with the kids than I was the work. Like, I didn't stress calling the theaters and saying, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm canceling, even though I'm a week out. I was more stressed telling my kids, like, we're going home early. But they all were cool with it because they get it. It's That's what I do. Daddy has a weird life. You know, I don't have the standard life that a lot of these guys do have. Well, I don't know. If the, well, yeah. you, I mean, that life existed before you got married, right? Yeah. So, I mean, your lovely wife knew. How she knew what she was worked. getting into. Yeah. Yeah. And right. that was actually part of when I proposed to her. I said, if you're okay with my lifestyle, like this, I'm, I'm not going to change. I, I can't. There's a lot of guys who try to get in the comedy and then their wives tell them like, okay, you tried it. Now you have to come back to being this. And, and obviously she was with you before um, you were uh, Famous, Successful, famous, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, like, she, she knew, yeah, way, way ahead of time. Well, and there was no default. It's like, okay, you have to go back to what you were doing before stand up. What's that? Uh, manning the lemonade stand? Like, I didn't have another job. Mike, did you work at a lemonade stand? <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying like a third grader. <laughs> well, I went from acting school to working at a comedy club. I don't have the lemonade stand is code for running stand up New York. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like now. <laughs> is it quote? Did, did it survive? Hmm? Uh, yeah, it survived, but it's like a, a high school. Um, High school glee club practice every time I see their lineups. <laughs> hey, I'm on their lineup. <laughs> You're the gay chorus instructor. <laughs> so uh, Derek and I, this is something I wanted to talk about because uh, Derek and I went to uh, theater school. We were at a conservatory at the American Academy and we actually oh, look at there we are. Ah. Wait, put that back up. Look in the bottom right hand corner. There's Derek and Mark looking like and Matt Fraley. We look like we're something out of Goodfellas. <laughs> oh, oh wow, look at that. Wow, look at a lot of hot girls. Damn. That oh, was, oh, 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 really, oh. <laughs> am I on am I on camera? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing. <laughs> and, uh, Nothing better than being a straight man. In I'm pointing at the receipts. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than being a straight man in the theater. <laughs> I tell people, I will, I'm like, we're very rare. We're very yes. rare. <laughs> oh my god! So we went to theater school, and it was 2001. We're working on our fake checkoff play. Check check off in uh, Yalta, Yalta, and two planes decide to fly into a uh, fly into a building, and w we don't know what's the future. We're about to graduate. We're doing our final play, so now we're in this completely screwed up environment uh, in the yeah, business. Yeah. The business is already fucked, and now we're going into it. We couldn't get anyone to come to our showcases. We couldn't get any industry to come see us. We were basically like a lost class. Like we went through school, and then when it was time to let us out of the pen, <laughs> like, sorry, yeah. there's no industry now. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean like right now, it's just yeah. it's probably worse. Yeah, but we didn't have Zoom technology. It, was, it wasn't like we could get agents yeah. to look at us, you know, via Zoom or do a monologue yeah. or something. Yeah, nobody, like, 
Everything shut down in New York at that time. The weird thing is, Mark, I feel like I've known you since like 1992. And, I, <laughs> and what were you, like six in 1992? I would have never known. I would have been 12. <laughs> 12 year old Mark Rigadana hitting the club circuit. <laughs> so weird. Like, I have no recollection of meeting you, but like, I've known you forever. You know? <laughs> Uh, so, Derek, what would, what's your take on letting us uh, lone wolves out into the world? Uh, think... Can you come more direct with that question? Yeah, it was a terrible question. Well, <laughs> well I'm sorry. Maybe if I had a bowl of cereal during the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to inter interrupt you having your fruity pebbles. <laughs> Oh my no, we're, we're, How old were we when we graduated? <laughs> 21? February of 2002. Um, I had just turned 21. Mark, when was, you were born in 81, right? 81, yeah. So you're wow. probably just tw 20. I graduated yeah. high school in 81, Mark. <laughs> 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 it was Probably. hard to believe. You know, you know, b fucking Bin Laden really threw a wrench into our whole lives. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been a writer if 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 nine eleven didn't happen. I would have just stayed the acting course. Yeah, really? was like uh, you know, they had me going out for alligator commercials and like all this weird shit. Like right after nine eleven, right after we finished school. And uh, I was like, I got, I got, let me write. Let me write. I'm going to be a writer. <laughs> I think it's cut what. 20 years later, cut the 40. Cut the 40. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it made us do our own thing. I think that's, you know, we, we both said, screw this. We're going to go in our own direction, create our own stuff instead of being the guy who's like, I'll just go to the gym six hours a day and wait for an audition. And then I'll go in and go like, you know, love city beer. <laughs> you know, like, is that artistically fulfilling? Uh, at, at 40, I would gladly take that job. <laughs> I would take it. I, I would take it for the money, but would that be fulfilling for you? Would you feel good at night going to bed going, Oh boy, no, I, I really I'm, sold blue microphones today. Listen, I I really accomplished like I we I was talking to this girl that hates me uh the other day. <laughs> and I said I like I just frankly said I accomplished everything I set out to do as a writer. There's still some things I want to do as a as a human being, but uh, as a writer, I, I, you know, it was all done. And uh, I got one more thing to do. Uh, well, actually, three more things to do. What was um, this? Was this podcast on that list? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> was one down, two to go. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was it. <laughs> this is, I was lying about the two, second and third. <laughs> it's just it. That's a great line. And by, and by this is it, he means this is the final straw. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> no, by, no, by this is it, I mean Michael Jackson and little kids. <laughs> uh, if you're looking to off yourself, you, you do it on a podcast. Can you imagine the publicity we'll get? <laughs> Don't encourage me. Don't encourage me. <laughs> Richie's going to be there going, so how old are you? How old? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, you can put another bullet in the gun and then spit it. No, no, no. I'm not a bullet in the gun guy. I'm, the, I'm an exorcist uh, suicide. Right That's out the window. Thing. Like, Bust out really? the window. Wow. Yeah, like bust I'm a, out the window and fall down the stairs. Like, get, me, get me out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, I'm get in the tub, do some 
drugs, drink some wine, and just go. I'm I'm a Whitney Houston kind of guy. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. a Whitney Houston we, kind of guy. We all have, we all have our own message. <laughs> what a feel to be. It's I funny to me that you chose that song instead of the bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a Dolly Parton song. Yes. Oh, oh, is it? Well played. <laughs> I'm just very happy none of you brought up that I have Harry Houdini hair today. <laughs> I look <laughs> like I should be escaping. kill themselves. The Houdini, Houdini did the awesome suicide. Yeah. It just, yeah. It's, just, it's not considered a suicide, but it was yeah. obviously a suicide. <laughs> what, was, what was Houdini? He, he died in a uh, in a tank, right? Yeah, well, because somebody came up and punched him in the stomach before his show because he used to do a thing where he'd let anyone hit him yeah. and it wouldn't affect him, but he wasn't ready for it. Yeah. So then that screwed him up doing the trick and but ended up. But that's a suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you ask. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, we have to get out because Frank has a show right after us. But uh, uh, Derek, we got to have you back on. I would love, you know, what I'd love to do is have Derek and JD Shapiro on. Yes, uh, and we'll time. talk about writing. Um, do you remember JD? He hung with us back in the yeah, back in the stand up New York days. He would hang with us. Which he wrote uh, no JD. He wrote Robin Hood Men in Tights. Oh. He used to, we used to all go out and get drunk up on the Upper West Side. Yeah. <laughs> Over on Amsterdam, yeah. Yep. Yeah. At, at uh, John's Bar. Yeah. What was it, McAllister's or whatever? All right. So before we go, um, before we sign off and let Frank take over, which anybody watching, all you have to do is hit the refresh button. Um, but before we go, um, one of the questions I asked and I wanted to ask more during that marathon was if you could be or who on television or in film best represents you as a person, what character in a movie or TV show that you watched and went, that guy is exactly me. Kamala Harris. <laughs> Cause you're every woman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's not. Ne a I'm character. never talking to you again. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, don't all answer at once. Oh, okay. um, I'm still stumped on this question. It's such a I good know, question. A good before I, I before I got married, it was Uncle Buck. <laughs> 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 and now that I'm married, I'm going to go with John Goodman and Roseanne. For me, it's it's Ralph Cramden. Good one. It's Ralph Cramden. A lot of bluster. <laughs> you know. All right. You oh. said TV or film? Or film. I took one from both. Uncle Buck and then I became Maybe John Goodman. Shark in Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> Anything May West. <laughs> Anything <laughs> May West. <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect answer folks that's drink jokes and storytelling thank you for tuning in please donate to the to bob nelson's yes. and tune in frank vignola's on right after us thanks guys uh.